Hi, this is Pastor Walker. Welcome to Faith Boost. It's great to be with you here in the middle of the week as we look at God's Word. So we've had two sessions before this one, and you can, you're can you welcome to go back on YouTube or Facebook and listen to those. They were awesome. And we're going through Hebrews chapter 11. And Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, it starts off with a definition of faith, and then it gives us examples of faith. Now, the book of Hebrews, spoiler alert, was written to Hebrews. It was written to Jewish Christians. So all of the people that the author of Hebrews brings out, what we sometimes refer to as the hall of faith, but really they were just examples of faith. These were people that were very familiar to that audience. So they, they knew their stories extremely well. And so what the Holy Spirit does is he points out the, the, the definition, the explanation of faith that's in, chapter, that's in verse one. Here is faith seen. This is faith lived out. And the idea is that you and I as believers, God wants us to live out our faith, not just to be able to um, know what faith is as a definition so we can get the answer right on an exam, but that we can have a lifestyle of trusting God. And so we're going to look today at two examples of faith, and, and some of these are done in kind of chronological order in the chapter, chapter 11. Two examples of faith and then a wonderful explanation of faith, some other foundational truths like in, in verse one. So let's go into verse four. So previous couple weeks we were in, in verse one, two, and three. Verse four, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. Verse five, by faith Enoch, when he was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. And that's quoting that uh, account in Genesis one. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. Now here comes this link to faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So with our limited time, let's look at Abel, let's look at Enoch, and let's look at that statement about faith that there's two really, really important components of faith. All right, Abel. Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. So in, if we go back into Genesis, we see that after the fall of man, Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel, and Cain, Cain was a, a farmer, Abel tended sheep, now, both of those things were good things. They were both things that God had commissioned in the garden to do. So even though mankind had fallen, they were about God's mission. They were about God's business. And they, the Bible says that they brought sacrifices to God and Cain brought, uh, from, from what he did, he brought grain and fruit things that came from the earth, and Abel brought an animal that was killed and was sacrificed. And if we go back to Genesis 4, we see that God was pleased with Abel's sacrifice, and he wasn't with Cain's. Now, and then sadly, Cain is mad at God and takes out his anger on his brother. Uh, I don't know if you've ever... I've. I've, I've literally done that. I haven't killed people, thankfully, but misplaced anger, we, we do that in very strange and weird ways in our life. So, but, but this verse is more bringing out the fact that um, Abel offered a sacrifice to God by faith. Faith was a component of it. Now, 
The Bible is silent as far as how did Abel know to do that? And one idea, and it's just an idea, was that perhaps Abel had heard from his parents the idea that when we left this magnificent garden, before we, before we rebelled against God, that as we left that garden, that God killed an animal and blood was shed and he clothed us with the skins of that animal. And so perhaps Abel knew that, that that was, that was something that God did, and maybe that's something I'm to do, all right? Kind of, you, you know, we fast forward to, to Abraham's life, and remember Abraham tithed, and no one told him to. He just did it. And, but he, there was something he knew about God, and he, he kind of figured it out. So it seems like Abel did that as well, that he was the first person after God in Genesis 3 to offer a sacrifice to God in the form of an animal that was killed, all right? And that pleases God. Now, very, very interestingly enough, that later when the law is given, so just like um, tithing happened before the law, but then the law explained it, clarified it, if, if you look at Numbers chapter 18, this is very, very similar to what Abel did, and now it, now it became a, a, a principle that was mandated for Jews. Numbers uh, 18, 17, it says, but the firstborn of a cow, the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem, for they are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as an offering made by fire as a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord, and the flesh shall be yours, just as the wave, uh, as the wave breast and the right thigh are yours. So God said, you eat the meat, bring the fat, um, burn it, it'll be a sweet smelling aroma. Um, I think we know anybody who's been around a braai knows that it is a sweet smelling aroma, and, and that the blood will go on the altar. So. Abel was kind of getting this idea that that is good to God, that that pleases God. And for, for us, it's a, it's a link that just like the, the blood of Abel, his, you know, he was killed, it speaks that the blood of Jesus speaks of something more wonderful. It speaks that, that God did this for us, that he offered his own son. His son became the Lamb of God. His son became the scapegoat for us. And we, we trust him. So we trust him. This points to Jesus. But it also points to the fact that we please God or we, it, it honors God when we do it his way. You know, sometimes people who perhaps have had a, a troubled past or a sinful past or a rebellious past. Sometimes they, they want to do this idea of penance. Let me make it up to God. I'll, I'll kind of repay God for all the bad things that I've done. Now, the, the Bible is really clear as far as restitution, and that is godly, that we, we make things right horizontally on planet Earth. We do repay people back like Zacchaeus did but we can't repay God. We can't, we can't somehow make that sin debt right. So the aspect of faith here is that we accept God's sacrifice. So God is not asking you and I to bring the, the fat of an animal or the blood to a place. But what we do is we do look to Jesus. We accept the work of Jesus and his sacrifice for us by faith, and that pleases him, all right? Now, Second example in our, in our text today is that Enoch, and this was a really, really simple illustration in those first chapters of Genesis, that he, he walked with God and he was not for God took him, all right? I, I heard it's a little bit of a, a simple illustration, but that Enoch was so close to God and God was walking with Enoch on the earth where Enoch lived that God said, you know what, Enoch, we're so close. 
why don't you just come to my house? And, and God took him and he was one of this, this amazing testimony, we don't really see this before or after, of someone who, who never tasted death, who never saw that, okay? We have no reason to believe that that, that will be our experience, all right? But, but the author of Hebrews does bring out the fact that if we look at that verse, it says that he was taken and had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. So you and I think about, well, I, I'd like to be like Enoch. I'd like to, to please God. So what is it, what is it going to be that pleases God? So, so the link of Enoch pleased God and then you and I please God is in verse 6. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God. So pleasing God is, is different. Please hear me out. It's very, very different than you and I receiving the free gift of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. When we are born again, we are made righteous. So pleasing God and being made righteous, you could say there, there's a link because as we're righteous, we have now this ability to do things that are good, do things that are, are pleasing to God. So there, how do we please God? Well, we, we trust him and we trust him. And at that foundation is, is two things. He that trusts God, he who has faith, number one, believes that he is the existence of God. In, in verse three, kind of the first example of faith was that we believe that God framed the earth by his word. And so the existence of God is very, very closely related to the heavens declaring the glory of God, that every day that you and I wake up, we recognize God made me. God made the air that I breathe. The reason that the sun comes up and goes down at night, the reason why, why here in, in Zambia we're in September, it's getting hot, but we know rain is coming. Why? God made it that way. That I, I recognize that he is, but there's a second port, point that's really important because there was a, a philosophy in, in the world about 250, 300 years ago called deism. And that was, these people would agree with the first part of that statement. Do you believe that God is? Sure, we believe that God is. Do you believe that he's a creator? Sure. But God was distant. God kind of wound up the earth like a clock, and then he went away to do something other than being active in the affairs of men. The Bible is not deism. So did God make the earth? Yes. Are there laws that cause the earth to spin and yes, but God is a rewarder. God is actively involved in my life. The rewarder of who? Those who seek him, those who look to him, those who trust him. And that is that faith at its very foundation is that I believe there's a God. I believe that there's a creator of my life. But I also believe that as I seek him, biblically, things change in my life. He is a rewarder. God responds. God hears. God listens. God is not distant. There was an old song in the 80s, God is watching, God is watching from a distance. Rubbish, nonsense. God is active and he is near. He is as near as my trust in him. And, and that's the rest of these examples that, that you're gonna see as we do on Faith Boost are God responding, God rewarding. And, and the first one is gonna be Abraham and Sarah, that, that something happened from heaven as they trusted God. So thank God for Abel, that you and I can know and look to the, the shed blood, the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank God for Enoch, that we know he pleased him. But how did he please him? By faith. What's at the basis of faith? God is, but he is 
active. He is a rewarder and responds to faith in my heart and faith that is directed towards him. So trust him today. Believe that he responds to you as you reach out to him biblically and trust him according to the promises he's given you. God bless you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the week, and we'll see you Sunday at Miracle Life. God bless.